I'm going to do a collection of single stone vases today and to be honest it's, this is absolutely my favourite way of arranging flowers. Partly because it takes such a short amount of time, I mean you know a few minutes of that, but also because you just get this lovely showing off of the container as well as the flower and so you can kind of work out this really nice contrast in colour or harmony in colour or whatever with the container and so literally if I've got people coming to supper and I'm cooking and I'm feeling a bit stressed I can still get a line of these down the middle of the table or I really like collecting them on some sort of tray and this is just an old zinc tray and that way you've got everything uh, the sort of impact collected in one place and in fact I've just read the biography of Constance Spry and it's really interesting because I've never read it before and I didn't really know what she liked and didn't like, but actually so much of what she liked, I like too, which is, um, which is nice. Um, and so it's easy to think that I've kind of been influenced by her, but actually I didn't know about it. But, but it's nice that we agree. And one of the things that she says is that rather than scattering small things right the way round a room, lots of different rather sort of fussy arrangements, it's much better to have what she calls a flower table. And on that flower table, just put everything together and, um, and just have this real sort of luxurious as a focus point, a central point in a room. And um, that's exactly what this does in a very quick um, and sort of informal way. So I'm just going to collect different colours and I, I really like um, to have different heights too. So I'm going to go little and large with these and uh, just um, one tall single stem there and then some just little really delicate things can go in there. And then I think, I, I really love the green, um, and I think I'm probably going to go the blue, because it's just a, so beautiful, that cobalt blue. Um, and then maybe I might go for the purple, or possibly the turquoise, I think maybe that one. Because um, it gives, you know, it's really nice in contrast. So you just sort of fiddle about a bit. Um, I mean, in the more autumnal range of colours, I would, I would definitely sort of go more in that range. But because it's spring, you know, I feel you want kind of quite a little bright sharpness. So I think that's nice. I, I might add a, a purple later or another one of the blues. But, so now I'm just going to go out into the garden and, um, and pick some things and just plonk them in. So I've, I've just been into the garden and I've picked a selection of, of really beautiful spring things with a with scent as a bit of a theme. The first thing I'm going to start with is the euphorbia. And this is going to go in my taller vase. And that's about the right sort of proportion for this. I don't want it right up here because it would then be too away from the rest of the flowers on the table. So about that sort of height is, is correct. And I've stripped the leaves quite carefully um, because I'm allergic to them, so I use gloves to do that. And searing is a really important technique with euphorbias because it seals the sap into the stem. And the polyanthus will last just that little bit longer if I sear the stem in, so just bunch them together and pop them in the boiling water. But because they're a softer stem, they don't take nearly so long. We've got some water in that one, so I'll just pop a bit more in. Oops. So I've now got sort of green anchor points really in the arrangement, almost like the foliage in an arrangement. And then I'm going to go for the blue, it's just popping them in now really. Bulbs don't need searing, so I haven't bothered to sear the hyacinth. It doesn't, it doesn't, but, but bulbs, um, whoops, make wonderful cut flowers um, with a great vase life. Um, the anemone parsitilla I'm going to sear just to make sure I don't pick that very often so I'm not absolutely sure whether it would or wouldn't last but it doesn't do anything any harm searing it and it does lots of things lots of good and again definitely the Daphne is worth searing so I'm going to pop that in I can go in the middle of this one here and because it's a woody stem the Daphne um, I sear it for slightly longer you you sear using two rules. The first rule is the longer the stem, the more you sear. It's, com it's all common sense. But the second is the woodier the stem, the longer you sear. So proportional to the height. So if I'm searing you know, that much, I sear a tenth. So I sear quite a section of it. And if I'm searing a woody stem, I give it 30 to 40 seconds. If I'm searing something like a bluebell, 
uh, which are about to come into flower now, which is very soft. I only sew it for 10 seconds. So um, how much you sear is proportional to the height and how long you sear is proportional to the texture of the stem. And then um, I'm going to pop in the, just strip the foliage off the wallflower. And then again, I always sear wallflowers, makes them last that little bit longer. And how searing works is doing two things. One, it increases the surface area for water absorption and um, basically by sort of partially destroying the outer cell walls it allows water to be absorbed over the section that you've seared more freely than if you hadn't seared. Um, and the other thing is it dislodges that air bubble and when you, or the air bubbles, when you sear them you'll see it bubbling underneath the water and that again um, allows for better water absorption. So nearly there and I am going to just add in a couple more vases. And the other great thing about the tray is even though I've been spilling water like the snow tomorrow, um, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as I dry the bottom of the container. Um, I don't have to worry about the furniture, which um, which is an added bonus. So just see those. And you'll see that on the whole, I'm not mixing things. So this is not about arranging within a vase, it's about arranging between the vases. That one's a bit shorter. And then finally, for a real zap of very, very strong colour. I'm going to pop this one in as well. So that's the Polyanthus Don Keefe. And again, soft stem, so just 10 seconds in the water. And then pop it into the the mix. Now I don't particularly like that colour with the pink so I'm actually going to shift it around a little bit and put that more centrally and put those in between. So I've just got a little bit of acid green there and then these can, the um, Daphne can come over near the parcetilla and that works better I think. So you can just shift things around a little bit and then there you are. And the good thing about this is generally that will last at least a week, if not ten days, with the thing seared. I'll top up the water every three or four days, and that's it.